Hey, hey, you're listening to the Journey with Janice podcast. Join me on the journey of pursuing Jesus, building our lives on the word, and seeing this world impacted with the love of God. The Journey with Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. You can find my podcast and other great podcasts in the network at newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at The Journey with Janice and check out my website, journeywithjanice.com. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Journey with Janice podcast. I pray that you are having an amazing day wherever you find yourself at today, whether you are in your car, at the gym, at home, wherever you are, standing there washing the dishes. I know that's what I do a lot while I'm cleaning house. I love listening to podcasts or music. I pray that wherever you are at today, that you are encouraged in the Lord, that you are sensing the presence of God wherever you are. I love that the presence of God is not limited to a church building. It's not limited to certain people. We have access to the spirit of the living God. And so I'm so thankful for that. And I pray that wherever you're at, that you are encouraged today. And I'm so excited for this episode. I'm always excited to get on here and encourage your hearts in the Lord to talk about Jesus, to talk about the Word of God, to talk about what God is doing in this season. I am so thankful that we serve a living God, a God who is intimately acquainted with all of our ways, a God who cares about everything that concerns us. And I'm so thankful that He is who he is. And that's one of the five million reasons I love the Word of God is because when we dive into the Word of God, we learn more about the heart of God. We learn more about his character and who he is. And I'm so thankful that our God is a God who wants relationship with us, that we do not have to be in a church building. We do not have to be a pastor or somebody in some sort of leadership. Like God is making himself known to whoever wants to know him. And so you do not have to be in a certain position or a certain place to call out to him wherever you're at. And I know for me, like I called out to the Lord in my car. I got born again in my car. God did not meet me in what maybe we would call a conventional place in a church meeting or at an altar. Praise God, he meets us in those places too, but we don't have to be in those places to encounter him And I'm so thankful that the Bible says that when we call out to him, he responds. And so I love the word of God. I'm sitting here with my pink Bible open and my journal. That's one thing I love to do is journal. I'm going to need some new journals here soon because I am almost to the end of this one. So I love just sitting with the word of God and writing out scriptures that just really speak to me as I'm reading. And so I do that because it's a beautiful way to hide God's word in my heart, to memorize the word of God, because I'm someone who wants to not just be a hearer of the word, as James says, but a doer of the word. I want to live out the word of God, to apply it to my life, to be like Romans 12, 2 says, transformed by the renewing of my mind. And we're transformed by the word of God. And so I love that his word is like a mirror to us and it helps us see where we're at and where we're going. I love that the Bible says that his word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. And it shows us where we're standing. It shows us the road ahead. And so I'm so thankful for the living and active, infallible word of God. And I pray that if you are someone who lives somewhere, because I know we have a lot of listeners from all around the world, that if you live somewhere where you have access to the Bible, I pray that you really don't take that for granted, that you dive into the Word of God as often as you can, and that you just love His Word, that you apply His Word to your life, that you hide His Word in your heart. I love that the Bible says, I will hide your Word in my heart that I would not sin against you, that I might not sin against you. And we want to be people who live upright, holy, set-apart lives for Him. And so I want to read Psalm 150 over you. I have some other scriptures we're going to talk about today, but I love this scripture. It's Psalm 150. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. He's so good. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We were created to worship God. 
We were created to know the one who created us. And I'm so thankful that we serve a God who wants to have a relationship with us. Think about that for a second. Like the living God, the one who breathed stars into existence. One, you can look up at this, the innumerable amount of stars in the sky and know that he breathed those into existence and he knows every one of them by name and that same God created everything that we see around us and he created you. He knit you together in the womb of your mother. He made you the way that you are and I love seeing people find freedom in their identity in Christ, who God made them to be, because that's something that I struggled with for a long time and not really knowing who I was. And in reality, hating who I was oftentimes as a teenager before I gave my heart to the Lord, just really wrestling with who I was being the loud, funny, extrovert girl and just wishing like, God, God, please change me. Like I remember being as young as second grade. I know it's crazy how young the enemy starts attacking us, attacking our minds, attacking our identity, attacking our confidence. And I remember being as young as second grade, crying myself to sleep. And at that time, I was kind of in and out of church. I had neighbors that would take me to church. I would go to church whenever I had the opportunity to. I've always had a heart that's been drawn toward the Lord. And so I knew about God and I knew about prayer and I would pray and beg God to change me to make me the quiet girl. I don't want to be the funny girl because I was, I've was i always been super quick-witted. And, and I remember just being in school and just being the one that would always just quick-witted, funny humor, whatever. But then instantly in my mind thinking, stop, stop being that person. And so then just voices throughout my um, teenage years and young adult years that really validated those lies the enemy was already planting in my heart and mind from a young age. And it just made me absolutely hate who I am. And so I'm so thankful that the Bible says in Galatians 5, 1, that it's for freedom that Christ set us free. And it talks about not going back to the yoke of bondage. And so whatever God sets us free from, we want to be people that stay free. We don't just want to get free. We want to stay free because it's always possible to go back to that place of bondage. And for me, that was a place of hating who I was, having really low self-esteem, being insecure and finally finding a place as a, as a young adult and a woman who loves the Lord of just being confident in who I am in Christ and helping others find that same confidence and freedom. That's something I'm so passionate about because who God made you to be is exactly what this world needs. And that is not a pass to live in the flesh and just do whatever you want and say, this is how God made me. I'm talking about like your personality, who God made you to be. Your flesh is not who God made you to be. We're actually called to crucify our flesh. And that's a whole other thing we could talk about. But we are called to be people who are surrendered to the Lord, to live in the fullness of who he made us to be. That's what I'm talking about. And I want to see people so badly walk in that, to live in the freedom of fear of man. We know the Bible says that fear of man is a snare. That's a scripture that I talk about a lot because it's something that so many of us wrestle with. We care so much about what people think of us. And fear of man, it does not mean that we're afraid of people. It means that we're afraid of people's opinions, that we care more about what someone might think of us than about what God says about us. And we have to get to a point where we're people who are so confident in who we are in Christ and who God has called us to be that we stop listening to any voice that is contrary to that. And any thought that is contrary to that, because sometimes it's not the voices of other people, it's the enemy coming at our minds and making us feel like we're less than what God made us to be. And I don't believe that any of us were created to live small. I don't believe that we all have the same platforms per se. I know like there are people who, you know, don't have the same call to be on social media or write books or do different things. Like it's so important that we don't compare ourselves to each other, but We were not created to live beneath who God made us to be, and only God can show you personally what that is. And so my prayer is that you are just resting in Him in this season, that you are discovering more of who He is, and as you do that and your trust in Him just expands and you trust him like the Bible says with all of your heart lean not on your own understanding and all of your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path Proverbs 3 5 and 6 that as you do that and you become confident in who you are in Christ that those other voices just become muted and I just I know that that's like a theme of my heart right now I'm getting ready to do a women's conference in November so y'all can be praying for that it's called unmuzzled and I 
I don't even know yet what I'm going to be sharing. I have a lot stirring in my heart and in my spirit, and I can't wait to release whatever that is, whatever Holy Spirit gives me to release at that event. But I just know there are so many people who have been silenced by the pains of life, who have been silenced by their past, who have been silenced by the opinions of other people, by the enemy, whatever that is. And God wants us to speak the truth in love, to live our lives boldly for Him, to be unashamed of the gospel, to be unashamed of our stories. I cannot tell you how many people that I have met who have shared their story with me for the first time. Like They're like, I've never shared this with anybody, and I always want to be someone who is a safe place for people, someone who people can trust with their heart, can trust with what they have been through to know that this is a safe place. And so really empowering people to be able to tell their stories, to know that like we don't have to live in shame. Shame is never from God. God gives us conviction, but he does not give us condemnation. And so when he convicts our hearts and he, he, like the Bible says, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. And so when he brings things to our attention and says, hey, like, mm, you know, trust me, I have been corrected by the Lord so many times. Even in re- like even yesterday, I had something where I had a friend, uh, God bless good Christian friends. And the Bible says it better are the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. And I had a friend call me out. And I'm telling you, we need people like that in our lives. And I was belly wailing about something. And she literally said to me, God set you free from that. You need to stop talking about it. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Because we need to be people who can correct each other in love and not be offended when somebody corrects us. We know the Bible says that the word of God is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness that the worker of God, that's all of us. If you're a born again believer, we're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. We're all called to do whatever it is God has put inside of us to to use our talents and gifts for his glory. We're all called to that. And it says that the, so it says the worker of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We want to be people who are thoroughly equipped. We, we have to be correctable to be able to do that. And I think that that is something we have to really guard against is becoming haughty or arrogant and be like, you know what? I know the word of God, or I've been walking with the Lord for this long and we become like uncorrectable. I don't know if that's even a word, but we're unable to be corrected by other people And that's a dangerous place to be because then you can get into pride and all sorts of other things. And I want to be someone who's like, okay, like, ouch, that might hurt to step on my toes, but step on my toes if it's going to save my heart and my mind. And she was right. And so I'm praising God that she was like, no, you need to stop complaining about that. God rescued you from that. So move on kind of thing. And I'm like, you are so right. So I love this scripture too. It's in Psalm 73, 26. It says, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. How many of you have ever been in a season where you feel like your heart and your flesh are failing, but God comes along and his strength is perfected in our weakness. And that just makes me so excited. This is why I love the word of God. When we read his word, it just comes alive. It's it's living and it's active. And I'm so thankful. I have read through the Bible. I don't even know how many times, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying I've read through the New Testament more times than I can even count. I've read through the Old Testament several times too. And it doesn't matter how many times I have read through a certain book of the Bible. And I go back and I read it. I say, Holy Spirit, help me to read this with fresh eyes. Help me to understand this. I pray over myself. God, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I want to know you more. That is why I read the word of God. I want to know him, to be intimate with him. And then everything else in my life, every relationship I have, every ministry opportunity, every podcast, every Facebook live, whatever I do, is an overflow of intimacy. And that is something that is so important. That is something that the Lord really warned me about when I started stepping out into more ministry things because I'm going to be completely honest. I never wanted a ministry platform. I never looked for it. I think that if you're listening and you're kind of craving like ministry, I would be really, really cautious with that because we need to desire Him, period. 
and then let him open doors. He opens doors no man can close. He closes doors no man can open. Praise him for that. But don't go looking for opportunities. Go looking for him and then let him direct your path. And there's such a culture right now in Christianity of almost having this desire for the platform or this desire for the microphone. But I'm telling you, when the Lord started calling me out into ministry, like, I have the fear of God inside of me and I'm like, Lord, your word says that that, that I'm going to be held to a higher standard, that there is a higher judgment for those who are te- who are in teaching positions, those who are leading. We know that we are held accountable for every word that leaves our mouth. The Bible says that we're going to give an account for every idle word. And so there is just a fear of God that comes with that and just a place of being like, God, I don't want to do anything unless you're telling me to. I don't want to step out into anything unless you are calling me to. We know the Bible says that unless the Lord builds it, we labor in vain. And so that is something we need to be so careful about and cautious of as we step out into the things God's called us to, because we do have a responsibility to steward the talents he's given us. If you've not ever read the parable of the talents, I encourage you to. The Bible talks about the parable of the talents. It's what Jesus taught in in a nutshell, the JRV Janus Regal version here of that parable is that we are going to give an account for what we do with what we've been given. So God has given each of us a, ta- uh, a portion of talents. And so he's given us things, gifts, talents, abilities. And so we have a responsibility to steward those talents well and to use them for their God's glory. And so you need to seek him out for whatever that looks like for you personally. And God will show you that when you ask him. The Bible says when we ask, we receive. And so ask for wisdom, ask for direction. He's going to give it. James says that when we ask for wisdom, he gives it liberally. And so I'm so thankful for that. But we are called, so we're called to steward those things, but we need to have the fear of God in us as we step out into those things that we know that like it's no light thing, that we don't take it lightly. There's a message John Bevere came out with recently about the fear of God. And it is such a good message. I encourage you to look it up. It's on YouTube, all the things. And just to get to a place where we really fear God so that when we're stepping into things that he's called us to, we're doing it with excellence, with anointing, with boldness. And we know we're only doing the things God has called us to because we're seeking him. We're just doing the things he's put on our heart because we don't want to get to a place where fear paralyzes us from stepping into things. You can go to the other end of the spectrum and and get in a place where it's like analysis paralysis and you don't step out into the things God has for you because you're so afraid of getting it wrong or whatever. There's a point where we have to step out of the boat like Peter and just keep our eyes on him and trust him and know that God is so much bigger than any mistakes we make. His grace is immeasurable. His mercies are new every morning. And so if you're stepping out, with a pure heart and saying, God, I just want to honor you with my life. I want to honor you with my gifts, talents, and abilities. And this is where I believe you're leading me. And so I'm going to start stepping in that direction and doing it with boldness. Like God is going to cover you. He's going to direct every step you take. I love that the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you are born again, surrendered to him, in relationship with him, he is a lot bigger than than we realize sometimes. And I think so often we minimize who God is. We minimize his power. We minimize his involvement even in our lives. And so as you're stepping out into whatever that is, whatever God has put on your heart, do it with boldness, do it with confidence and just let him build with you though. Don't build without him. And so a lot of times like people will be like, well, how do you know? How do you know what God's called you to do? One thing I always say is, what are you naturally good at? What do you love doing? Like for me, writing is like a passion of mine. I love writing. And so it makes sense that God has called me to write books because that is something I'm passionate about. Now, I have been in a pause season right now where I have, I know what my next book project is, but God hasn't given me the green light, so to speak, to start it yet. And so I'm waiting on him for that. And until I have a peace in my spirit, I'm not going to start writing. Um, Even though he's shown me what that's going to be, it's just not time yet. So timing is everything with the Lord. And that's another thing is God's peace. Like, is it, are you in a season of praying and just waiting 
for God to release you into that? Or is it go time? Because you don't want to drag your feet when God says go either. You want to be in step with him. You want to be in sync with him and just doing what he has called and commissioned you to do. And so another thing is you could ask people that you're close with, like, what do you see as my strengths? What do you see are like as my, uh, what do you see are my gifts and my, uh, my talents and anointings? Because, you know, a lot of times we don't see those amazing qualities that are within us. And like, for me, for example, like there are things that I do, like I'm definitely a dot connector. I'm someone who loves connecting people like that's a natural gifting. And, and a lot of times I kind of take it for granted. I'm just like, oh, this is just who I am. This is what I do. For me, it doesn't require any effort or anything because it just feels so natural to me that I forget that that actually is a gift. That's a gift God has given me to be able to connect people in such unique ways. And so that can be used for God's glory in so many ways, but it would be easy for me to overlook that because like I said, for me, it's so natural that it almost feels like it's just second nature for me to be, to like do those things. But then when I step back and, you know, people have validated that gift inside of me. And so when I step back and analyze it, it's like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. Like, you know, whatever. Like last week I had three friends that were down in Tennessee together and I did not give in to my flesh and get into jealousy, but I was a little bit like, I wish I was there with them. But three friends from completely different places that one's from Indiana, one's from Tennessee, and the other one is, the actually the other one's from Tennessee as well. And like God had connected them through me through different circumstances or whatnot and then they're all down there together and I'm like this is so crazy like how cool is this that like they're going and having the time of their life at this retreat together and like I was a small part of that and I just think that's so cool and I think that sometimes we fall into false humility of being like you know nope nope it's it's all God like yes we can't do anything without him but through him we can do all things and so yes we can't do anything without God. It is all glory to God, but we do have a part to play. And God chooses to use us to make kingdom impact in this world. And so I just want to be someone who says yes to him, whatever that means, whatever that looks like. Like I tell God all the time, you have my fresh yes. And there are times that it's like, oh, that's a little overwhelming because I don't know what that looks like and kind of tests your faith and your trust. Like, do I really trust you, God? And so I'm just so thankful that God is who he is, that all he is asking us to do is surrender, give him our yes, and just do what he has put us on this earth to do. And I think about this all the time. I've said this many times. I want to be someone one day that when I'm old and gray and I'm talking to my grandbabies, that I have stories to tell them about times that I stepped out in faith. I don't want to live in regret. I don't want to live in what if. I don't want to live in a place of wonder what I what would have happened if I would have stepped out and I would have done this. And so that honestly, that motivates me because I want to have a legacy that I can pass down to future generations. And ultimately, the greatest legacy is one of loving Jesus, of loving God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving others as myself. And every season of life is going to look different. What God chooses to do in and through us is going to look different. And that's the beautiful thing about following him and living out this journey with him is that it's not monotonous and it's not boring. I always say, anyone who says that being a Christian is boring clearly has only tried religion. They have not actually walked with the Lord because it is exciting. It, I mean, it's full of mountains and valleys, but I love that no matter where we find ourselves, whether we're on a mountaintop, whether we're in the valley, He is with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He goes before us in all things. He chooses to let His Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, dwell within us. He surrounds us. He's our rear guard. We are covered in Him. And I'm so thankful for that. So I'm going to close out with Psalm 91. I love this scripture. A lot of you probably maybe heard it in 2020. I feel like it was a scripture that got read a lot as we just reminded ourselves of 
who God is and how we are covered by him. And there's just such a call in this season. I feel like it's always been a call because it's the word of God and it's what he has commissioned us to do. And in John 15, where it talks about abiding, but there, I just have heard so many messages and just words in this season about abiding in him, about remaining in him. And we know in John 15, I'm not going to get into it because we're going to end here with Psalm 91, but it talks about when we bear, when we abide in him, we'll bear much fruit. And it's to our father's glory to bear much fruit. And my prayer is that your heart is to live a life that glorifies God. And how do we glorify God? We bear fruit. We bear fruit. And the Bible tells us to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And so if you have chosen to turn your life away from this world and live a life that is sold out and surrendered to him, then you should be bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. You should bear fruit that says, hey, I have nothing to do with this world. I have severed all ties with this world. I'm a friend of God, not this world, because we know the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. And so when people say, oh, they've kind of got one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom, that's actually unbiblical and it's not possible. You're either all in with him or you're all out. And so my prayer is that you would be all in with him, that you would bear much fruit, that you would just experience the gift of repentance, which is a big Christian word that literally just means turning toward him and away from the things of this world and live a life that is sold out and surrendered to him. So I am going to end with Psalm 91 as a prayer over you today. And just feel free to reach out to me on social media. My website, journeywithjanice.com would love to connect with you. would love to pray with and for you. Trust me, I don't do these podcasts just to do them. I do them because it's part of my calling in this season of my life. And I do them because I I love connecting with people. I love encouraging your hearts in the Lord and just talking about the truth of who God is. And so if you're in a place of defeat and like I read earlier, where you feel like your flesh and your heart are feeling just know that God is your strength and he's your portion forever. And I'm just believing that God is going to work mightily in your life, that he's going to turn situations around for you as you keep putting your faith and trust in him and calling out to him. He hears your cries and he cares about everything that concerns you. So let's read Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest any da- lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.